Hello, it's Ren Presents Time. I'm your host, Ren, and today we continue with the third turn of the Shadow Tech Goddess, Stenabel. So here we are, in a place that well, I guess we were always meant to be. Chapter 14, Rem Deckard. He knew there was no way that Stenabel could come aboard this ship, see the plight of the crew who are still alive, and not take action on their behalf. That would be pretty unheroic. And we're not going to have that Stenabel, whose mission was just to get data, get information for a greedy professor who wants to take credit for rediscovering a freaking planet, but finds herself embroiled in this weird situation where the insane Captain Duval is sacrificing the female members of his crew to these creepy alien punts. The squeeze them of Shadow Tech, an unsavory fate. No matter how you slice it, Sanibel sees this and unconsciously or consciously begins thinking, I can't let these people die. I have to do something. And she thought, well, maybe I'll just withhold the info from the professor and the professor will take action. She's got her little hooks into everything. Certainly there's something she could do. But no, the professor sort of cut her off at the pass. The Unimind just sent her the data without Stenabel's involvement. Says, it's admirable that you want to save the crew, but screw them. You're here for camera, but Stenabel cannot do that. She now is going to save the crew. Captain Duval, after attempting to fire on the Demophilon John and capture their crew, found himself on the losing end of a brief battle where Captain Gwendolyn was ready for malfeasance on his part, maneuvered away from his sarbeam blast and pummeled him in return with the Christmas guns, which are what are the very small guns on the Demophilon John, but in well-placed areas they can take out key parts of the ship and so she did, but Harkin, she also brought two marine cutter ships with her. And the marines are in the process, as we saw in the last chapter, of taking the ship. And even though Captain Duval opened fire on another ship, he is currently working on his defense. He's a slippery sort, the kind that can kick hot with his mitts red-handed deep in the shit and still talk his way out maneuver his way out he's redacting logs he's sending fake messages to the fleet pleading his innocence i wasn't doing nothing i was just here minding my own business and then i got fired upon yeah so the biggest piece of evidence against him is the crew riding away in there in the hold ready to be sacrificed for Shadow Tech. If those unfortunate souls come into the light, then Captain Duval is pretty much done. It doesn't really matter what Captain Gwendolyn says, that he fired on her first. He can always say, well, she manufactured that information or altered her logs or something. Smooth talkers just can always just come up with the lamest of shit and speak it into existence. And that is his goal. That is his goal. Goal. So, Stenabel has to go and save the crew because Rem Deckard, the lieutenant, the second in command, is on her way to incinerate the crew. How she's going to do that is not currently known, but Stenabel, as in her brief dallyings with this sadistic lady, knows that she somehow is able to manipulate heat and she doesn't really know how or why she can do this but who knows or maybe she'll just put him in a incinerator and burn him up or maybe she has something else planned all stenabel knows all stenabel knows is that her serial cone information which has been pretty good so far labels rem deckard as extremely dangerous so stenabel is on her way to the hold to interdict Rem Deckard. Obviously, it's the name of the chapter. So, you knew there was going to be a clash between these two at some point where the hero meets 
the villain and the field of battle. So let's proceed immediately. Enough of my prattle. Chapter 13. I think I said 14 earlier. It is 13. Rem Deckard. Stenabel moved alone through the ship, hearing the distant report of weapons firing. The lighting flickered and then went out altogether. She shook up a yellow holy stone and continued through the dark. A crack marine squadron was now laying waste to Bergen and Duval's dreams. How lovely. They wanted to end the universe. Well, here it is for them. Ahead is the hold where she had rescued Lady Lessa. It flickered with emergency lighting. She heard the hydraulic drone of the loader in use, peppered with the occasional thumps of containers being brought down to the floor. She tossed her holy stone aside. She entered the hold. She saw the containers neatly stacked in tall columns in the center, each concealing a shadow tech poison female crewman. At the control desk was Rem Deckard, manipulating the loader, stacking the containers in the center. The ghoulish man Stenabel had incapacitated and containered stood next to her, slightly wobbly from the lingering effects of the pinky. A slight orange glow from the screens at the desk danced about her face. A warbling sound Your gave presence Stenabel's presence away. All about the Thank floor you. were a number of round glass nodules. The ones near her were flashing and making noise. Though invisible, her position Your was presence given has up. Been Deckard looked up from her work. Thank you. She smiled. Esther woman, she said. Is that you? It must be. It's a demon, the man said wearily. Do shut up, will you? Deckard replied. She stepped out towards the containers and drew her knife from her fleet coat. I'm here to kill these people, Esther woman, she said. I'm gonna burn them up into nothing. And I'm gonna kill you too. The captain said to capture you, to bring you back so they can brand you and make you their little slave. Funny thing. I don't see the captain anywhere around, or the Zaffin. Captain's up there on deck two, surrendering to the marines, talking his way out of trouble. So here I am to get rid of the evidence. And that includes you. Stenabel tried to move into a better position. The warblers on the floor gave her presence away again. Deckard followed her movements with her eyes. I know you're here. I still haven't figured out your stake in all this. Will my killing these crew break your knees? Will it pick your pockets? What do you care? And another reality, Bergen said you're a man. Here though, you're a sniveling little bitch, wringing your hands, just waiting your turn to die. Why wait? Show yourself. Show yourself. I'll burn every one of them right now through their containers. You think I can't? Stenabel didn't know what to do. If she had her gun, she'd just shoot her and be done with it. She decided to stall for time, for certainly the marines would arrive soon and capture Deckard. Stenabel emerged from the shadows and they faced each other. Deckard smirked. Well, well, you had the balls to show. She raised her knife. Stenabel flicked her wrist and had six marzable daggers between her fingers. I'll not let you hurt these people any further. I am here to protect them. The man raised a heat gun. I'll kill you for putting me up in that box. Stenabel let fly with three of her daggers, getting a man in the arm and the chest. He fell with a cry and backed away. That man needs hospitaler attention, she said. Does he? Deckard turned to the man and slit his throat without hesitation. Rem Deckard reared back and <laughs> laughed. <laughs> That's how you get things done. You might be some extra planar creature, whatever that is. But I am from Mora, from Modron. And if you want to live, you fight for it. Go ahead. Take a shot. I give you a free opportunity to kill me. You'll not have another. 
Stanabel didn't hesitate. She let fly with her marzible, throwing three of them as hard as she could. They found their mark, two in the chest and one right between the eyes. All three bounced off with a distinct metallic clunk. Deckard didn't flinch. Ha! <laughs> Do you see now what Modrin did to us? We are from Mora, and we are once human. Let me show you. Before Stanabel's eyes came a white-hot flash and a blast of terrible heat. Deckard had transformed into an effigy of fire, her clothes vaporizing and her knife turning to white-hot in her hand. The dead man nearby caught fire. The temperature sensor squealed. Deckard laughed, her voice a high-pitched sizzle. You see? You see we are Femora, people of the fire! The crew are being incinerated alive right through the containers right now. There won't even be ash when I'm done, just vapor. When the marines get here, they'll find nothing. They will carry the day on the ship, but the captain will win the war. He'll be dragged off to the fleet, and the admirals will dangle him before the gallows. He'll say pretty things. He'll blame the marines and the scouting ship out there for the loss of life. For all the missing crew, oh, Tisk. And he'll talk his way back onto the ship. Then he can do what he wants with the universe. I'll be there at his side. I'll remake Modron into a paradise. Into the best of places in any universe. I am Femora. The heat Deckard created was fierce. And Stenabel could barely look at her without squinting. Her eyeballs felt like they were melting. From what she could see... Deckard looked like a flaming iron billet on an anvil, splotchy oranges mixed with angry reds and fiery yellows, dappled with bluish streaks of carbon imperfections and sparks of slag. Her eyes and teeth were dark, hammered splotches on her face, and her hair was a veil of fire. Superheated breath snorted from her furnace-like mouth. There was a great shock that rumbled through the ship, knocking both of them off of their feet. The second marine ship had breached the ship. Deckard recovered and came at Stenabel, darting with her ugly knife. Stenabel shrunk from the heat. She couldn't cope with it. What was she to do? She flashed her daggers and instinctively met Deckard's knife, trying to protect herself. Deckard fought with glee. She seemed to want to torture Stenabel to make her suffer before finally killing her. She pushed her daggers aside and attacked with a terrible bear hug, wrapping her flaming arms around her, hoping to roast her alive. Stenabel withered in the heat, trying to cry out but unable to make a sound. Deckard laughed and squeezed tighter. Stenabel jammed her daggers into her gut. It was like trying to stab an iron statue. Die! Just die like you were never even here! Deckard hissed with glee. Stenabel thought to give in, to die here on the George part and never see her family again, her father, her sisters, never see Aram and Alesta again, to die along with the rest of the crew and never see Gwen again. I have many questions. I see you, Gwen. She played her one last card. Bong! The vuncula dashed out of her HRN and tagged Deckard hard on the chin. She recoiled and fell to one knee, stunned. Free, Stenabel backed up a step or two. She looked herself over, expecting to behold the charred ruins of her body. Instead, she saw nothing. No singeing, no blackened flesh or burnt hair. Her HRN wasn't even dirtied. Her HRN... Her HRN infused with power from the sister's show she'd been told seemed to have protected her from Deckard's furnace-like heat. While she didn't like the heat much, it wasn't hurting her. Back in our universe, the sisters did something to the HRN, Aram had said. 
Deckard stood and Stenabel balled up the Hoban war club on the end of her vuncula into a fist. The two squared off. Deckard flashed her knife. Stenabel turned it. She tried to bear hug Stenabel again. She pushed Deckard away with two marzibles, and then Stenabel attacked. Bong! Out came the vuncula with a terrible shot to Deckard's chest, creating a flurry of embers, and she shed bits of carbon and forge scale. Deckard seemed puzzled, possibly stunned a second time. She came again. Bong! Another hammering blow from the vuncula. Bong! Another! Bong! Another! The vuncula moved like a wrecking ball, hitting Deckard one way and then coming back the next. Left, right, the pounding took its toll. Deckard was losing confidence, her fire going out, no longer looking to attack. Now she pulled back, trying to defend herself from the onslaught, looking for a route to flee. Stenabel gave her no pause, landing hammer shot after hammer shot. Her flame darkened, her body turning black. Deckard dropped her knife. It hissed on the floor. Stenabel wasted no time floating. She remained silent and took Deckard apart one blow at a time, pounding her like a blacksmith working a billet of iron. Deckard turned to run. Stenabel hit her again, knocking her jaw off. She fell and her flame went out. Her steaming body laid there, twisted up on the floor like an iron statue forged all wrong, pounded into tormented deformity. Several minutes later, the first wave of marines arrived. Hands up, Stenabel greeted them. I give up, she cried, and I would like to see Captain Gwendolyn right away. Swish, knock, knock. The battle aboard the George Parr was over. The marines had carried the day. Stenabel stood in the hold where she had battled Rem Deckard. The marines were in the process of transferring the crew from their cargo containers to proper medical capsules. They were then to be offloaded to the marine ships and taken to Baz for immediate hospitaller treatment. She watched the process. She had stood over them and now she would see them off. As each capsule passed by, she gave them her Tyrol wish luck gesture, a flourish with her fingers followed by two knocks. Lieutenant Gwendolyn stood nearby, watching her swish and knock on each capsule. It's something we do in Tyrol, just wishing them luck and safe journey. She felt Gwendolyn knock on her shoulder lightly and then sweep with her fingers. Stenabel smiled. What was that for? As you said, for luck. You did it backwards, but thank you. I spoke with Lady Lesabel, Lieutenant Gwendolyn said. The things she told me were quite unbelievable, frankly. She was quite hysterical and difficult to understand, truth be told, but she verified what you had told me. So I set out right away and picked up two cutter ships loaned out from the 13th Marines. It was fortunate that the George Parr was sailing in the direction it was, otherwise we'd not as intercepted as quickly. Has Lady Lessa sought medical attention? She has. She is uh, under hospitaller care on Planetfall, when last I checked. How many here are being taken out? Stenabel asked. Thirty-six. All safe, thanks to you. How are you, Belle? Are you all right? I'm fine, Gwen. I... Stenabel saw the concern on Gwendolyn's face. I'm fine. Just a bit tired. Then you must go to my ship where you can rest. I've set aside quarters for you. What about Hold 4? What was found there? Nothing. The Marines performed a complete inspection. They found nothing but a bit of earth and a few piles of cinders. They did detect Shadow Tech in the hold, but could find no source. The punts there must have fled the ship somehow, and they took the statue with them. No matter, they are gone. I would like to see Melazar. Where is she? The Caroline woman? The giant? The very one. She is rather tall, isn't she? She's down this way, I think, Gwen said, pointing. It's not good news. 
They exited the hold and went down the corridor, passing groups of marines and dispirited pockets of captured K-listers who had happened to survive the battle. Around the bend was a makeshift and somewhat grisly morgue. Bodies of fallen K-listers were piled up, being identified. Some were being put into bags. A few marines were wounded and receiving field treatment. Down the way, Stenabel saw a slender pair of feet and long legs supine mixed in with the dead K-listers. Stenabel winced. She walked up and looked down at Melozar's still body amongst the dead. Get up, please, she said. This is no place for you. Melozar opened her yellow eyes and sat up. She held her arms out. Stenabel helped her up. Gods, but was she heavy. She was wearing a donated marine coat over her tiny robe and a hat, though her legs and feet were still bare. She seemed to have recovered a spark of her wits from Bergen's drugs, and bits of her personality were showing through. She appeared to be a winsome, adventurous person full of life and curiosity. Stenabel was looking forward to getting to know her, to hearing her speak and the stories she had to tell. Certainly a Zaphantropist would have a host of lurid tales to regale her with. She really shouldn't be wandering off and laying down with the dead, Gwendolyn said. There could be K-listers lurking about unaccounted for. We should get her aboard my ship immediately. She needs to be properly dressed and shooed. By creation, she's half naked. Bergen liked her that way. The drugs he plied her with seemed to be wearing off. We'll have a hospitaler look her over and give a proper diagnosis. Zaffin potions can be long-lasting, with significant side effects. We need to make certain she's healthy. Has she been checked for any Zaffin assassination devices or poisons? I don't trust Bergen. The Marines performed a field check on her. She had a Midas Chastity Key brand, which was removed. They didn't find anything else. He tried to brand me with one of those, and I wasn't having it, Gwen. May I see Captain Duval? I need something he took. What did he take? A chart. Just a memento, but it's important to me, and I must have it. He's in his quarters, under guard. So is his affin. As soon as my orders come down from the fleet, we'll be moving him to the brig aboard my ship. We have to be careful in these matters and follow correct procedure. Taking a captain off of his flagged vessel is a complicated process. We don't wish him having anything on which to build a case for defense. We have him dead to rights on a staggering number of violations, and I'd hate to see him slither out of it on a minor technicality. Such things have happened before. Then I must see him now, please. Gwendolyn nodded. If you must. They walked down the corridor and headed into the lift. Melazar tried to pad behind them and follow, but Stenabel asked her to stay with the Marines, where she would be safe. The lift door closed, and they went up. We just completed purging the deck of Vitrax gas, Gwendolyn said. It wasn't a kill Vitrax gas, it was an incapacitation Vitrax gas. Uh, the lesser sort, but still would have given you a bad headache once you awoke. There might be some lingering pockets. You must tell me if you feel ill. Will you feel its effects? I'm immune to it. I've been inoculated. Stenabel looked up at her face. I'm eager to discuss certain matters with you later. The picture and so on, if that still interests you. Gwen blushed a little and said nothing. Stenabel barely knew Gwendolyn, yet she felt perfectly at ease, as if she'd known her for years and Gwendolyn herself seemed more engaged, less submerged in her loneliness. I could see you hiding in the tailoring office, Gwendolyn said. I was relieved that you were unharmed. Stenabel felt invigorated by her presence. Aram and Alesta had said Gwen, as a Murthig, gave her power, and she certainly felt it. She longed to kiss Gwendolyn as she had on Planetfall, but this time not in anger. But she hid the thought. It certainly wasn't proper at this time. How's your watch? Stenabel asked. It's still working. The doors opened. The finery of Deck 2 was in shambles. Bullet and energy blasts riddled the walls. 
blood stains marred the floor. She smelled the sweet notes of V-Trax floating around. A company of marines stood guard. Gwendolyn led her down the deck and into Duval's quarters. Inside, Duval and Bergen sat on a couch flanked by marine guards. Duval saw Stenabel and smiled. Ah, Lady Stenabel, no worse for your adventures, I see. I was concerned for your safety. Were you? I saw Rem Deckard in the hold. I don't know if she's alive or dead. So, I take it you assaulted my first officer, who was in the process of establishing parley with the Marines to ensure no lives were lost. No doubt your actions caused the tragic and unnecessary misunderstanding here that costs many lives. Good to know, and I thank you for that talking point. She was attempting to murder the crew under your orders. Duval shrugged. I issued no such orders. Very bad business about the crew. Fell victim to this Zaffin's plot. I wished I'd uncovered it sooner. Duval was a slick character. Even now he was working on his defense, turning on Bergen. Bergen himself sat there and seemed a dejected and beaten man. I want the chart, Melazar drew Duval. Give it to me, Stenabel said. Hearing her name, Bergen shuffled in his seat. Melazar? Where is she? Duval spoke over him. That chart is my personal property, Lady Stenabel. Are you hoping to steal it from me in front of all these witnesses? If you must know, it's in my right breast pocket, and that is where it will stay. Stenabel approached. Of course you realize you cannot touch me or steal my things. Such matter could assist in my defense, as I truthfully build the case that I am an innocent pawn, my ship hijacked, my goods stolen, my person assaulted, my crew murdered. It's a wonder I survived to be rescued by the Marines at all. Well then, it's a good thing the chart doesn't belong to you, does it? It belongs to Melazar of Caroline, written by her hand on vellum belonging to Rodrigo of Bergen, signed with her name. It's a good thing Bergen here corroborates my story. It's a good thing he is thinking of his defense as well. She turned to him. Right, Bergen? Bergen made no reply. The vuncula emerged from Stenabel's coat and gingerly dipped into Duval's. Before he could react, she had the chart. The vuncula slid back into the depths of her HRN. I'll just take that back and return it to her. There. It's also a good thing I didn't touch you in the matter of returning Melazar her things. Bergen spoke quietly. May I see Melazar? No. May I please see Melazar? No. You will not see her again. He looked defeated and genuinely heartbroken. I would have built her a whole world, filled with all the things she loves. Listen to this lunatic, Duval said, clearly deranged and quite zaffin in his madness. How fortunate for us all the Marines put a stop to your plans. Bergen wept, showing his teeth. Have they? he asked. He lifted his hand and gripped his right pinky with his left thumb and forefinger. Have they? Duval? he repeated. What are you doing? Duval asked, a slight note of alarm in his voice. Bergen said a brief prayer to some pagan god. Marines! Marines! Shoot this man! He's... Bergen snapped his pinky, moving it into a grotesque position. Instantly, his head exploded in a spray. Duval had a moment to suck in his breath, and then his head exploded too. The two dead men knocking together, headless on the couch. The Marines called out in shock. Gwendolyn came rushing into the room. Good creation! Bergen must have infused the captain with a Shadow Tech night poison. All we had to do is slip it into the captain's coffee or tea. Very difficult to spot and very effective, Gwen said. Stenabel stared in horror at the two dead men on the couch, their dreams dashed aside in a spray of gore. She had a terrible thought. 
If Bergen could have done that to the captain, then certainly if he could have done the same to Melazar. She exited the room. She had to be all right. She just had to be. She went down the lift, looking for Melazar. There was a commotion in the corridor ahead. She grit her teeth and feared the worst, that perhaps Bergen had tainted Melazar with the same night poison, taking her with him in death. There she was, just ahead, standing tall in her borrowed red coat, dancing with a marine. She breathed a heavy sigh of relief. Melazar, thank creation. I was worried. The marines turned to Stenabel. Blood coated their faces. Melazar had no head. Several of the marines were covered in her blood. One of them, in shock, was holding her up. Bergen had killed her, too. What had Aram and Alesta said? The Merton was difficult to keep alive. Try as one might, the universe would see them dead. And they were correct. And with that, we conclude Chapter 13, Rem Deckard. So Stenabel goes to take on Rem Deckard and quickly finds that she is a femora. Modron is clearly one of the most hellish places in the league. It was a, a moon, actually a fairly fertile moon, with a established colony with many little cities dotting the moon. And then it got knocked into Planet Falls immense gravity and got pulled down into Planet Falls upper atmosphere through the mesosphere and down beneath the outer layer of clouds so Modron is you can't even see it if you look at Planet Fall kind of looks like Jupiter and Modron is spinning round and round going faster and faster every year under the clouds so you can't even see it it is the fastest place in the league and in Zaffin space and one of the deadliest because the front end of it is basically on fire as it moves through Planet Falls atmosphere. Extremely deadly. Most of the cities on Modron were abandoned and destroyed. But one, one called Femora, was also supposed to be abandoned. But stories crisscrossed the league that some of the people on Femora never left. And it's in a spot on Modron that is avoiding the direct the fiery side but living there has changed these femoras turned them into like people of fire people of metal and that's what it's done to Rem Deckard in other stories where Rem Deckard appears she's not a fiery woman of formora she's different she's always vast you know very different from how she is in other books but she's usually on the side of Captain Duval, usually a bad guy. Bergen had introduced a night poison that into Captain Duval and Melazar's tea that he could basically explode their head whenever he wanted. All he had to do was like break his finger a certain way and it would trigger this poison. His head explodes, Duval's head explodes, and Melazar had explodes. And that's I felt bad about killing Melazar in this book because she's fairly innocent. But as a Merton, like I say, the universe will see them dead. She usually dies in pretty horrible ways. And here again, poor Melazar gets taken down. You know, it's, it is what it is. And something that happened, Duval was proving to be a slippery character trying to work his way out of the immense amount of trouble he was in and you would think such outlandish claims would have no traction hold no water but you'd be surprised what if someone says something enough people begin to believe it no matter how outlandish pe speaking things into existence is a thing it is real and if you if you talk hard enough and enough people listen, you can get people to believe anything. But that's all irrelevant at this point as his head is in a billion pieces all over the place. Stenabel did a good job taking on Rem Deckard. Finds out that her HRN was protecting her from Rem Deckard's heat and flames. And with that, it's pretty much a done deal with her... Vuncula, you just pound her into slag, pound her into the dirt, 
as it were. We are just about done. Next week, chapter 14 is called Prentice, and it's only a few pages long. And after that is a one-page epilogue. And then we will be done with Stenabel. There's some loose ends to tie up and so forth. And then we will be done with the story. Again, by far my shortest book. Only uh, about 50,000, 60,000 words. I think more like 56,000 it's about 180 pages in total. And so it's a pretty small book. My books are usually in the 300 page range, usually 160, 170,000 words sometimes. It just depends on what the story I'm trying to tell dictates. And this is a really simple plot. Just a uh, infiltration and information gathering thing with uh, some other things thrown in but it doesn't take long really to tell a story like that but as we were mostly just a character study following Stenabel from her release from prison from her from her growing into herself becoming at ease at being in her own skin at discovering the hero that lies within and to take on a flaming demoness from Fremora you got to have that heroic spark in you. you got to have guts. Of course, she had help. Morgan Jedricks' uh, fl- fear soak helped out a little bit there. And just her growing belief in herself and the numerous skills that she has got her through what would have been a horrific event for most anybody else. In any event, next week, Chapter 14... Apprentice and the epilogue and then we will be done it will be the final chapter of Stenabel and then we will move on to the next book and I think I'll uh, reveal what the next book will be next week in the meantime this is Ren Presents I am your host Ren peace out